Indiana has a bounty of water, so it's easy enough for cities and utilities to meet current demand using existing water resources. But in a report the Chamber of Commerce released last week, officials warned problems could soon arise as projects like Interstate 69 spur more economic development. That's because while the state has enough water, it doesn't have the infrastructure in place to get it where it needs to go. As Casey Kuhn reports, chamber officials are calling for a statewide water management plan to address those issues. But whether that happens depends on if the legislature decides it's a priority worth funding. 16% of jobs in Indiana are tied to manufacturing. And that number is growing as companies recover from the recession and others decide to relocate here. But what makes Indiana so attractive? Water. A report last year from the University of Michigan found Indiana's manufacturing intensive economy is more dependent on abundant sources of water than any other state in the country. Without water, uh, we wouldn't be able to operate our saws. It's harvesting season here at BG Hoadley Quarries. Owner David Fell says on days like this, he could use up to 500,000 gallons of water. We fill up our reservoir in the back of the mill, and from the reservoir then we draw water for our, our saws. Here at the quarries, they use a lot of water. They use almost 500,000 gallons a day. That's almost 15 swimming pools. Several years ago, the state labeled BG Hoadley as a significant water withdrawal facility. By definition, that means it can pump at least 100,000 gallons of water per day, or about 70 gallons per minute. When a facility gets this classification, it's subject to increased monitoring from the State Division of Natural Resources. Indiana has a program and has since 1985 of uh, registering and requiring the reporting of water use by significant water withdrawal facilities. The DNR keeps data on all the wells in the state, so at any given time the agency knows where water is being used and for what reason. Yeah, we're going to Hydrogeologist Jack Whitman was the lead author on the water resource study. He says the state could better understand how to manage its groundwater if it made use of the data it already has. We have to pay attention in a way that we haven't ever before. So we so what we're going to have to do is to make use of resources that have really just sat idle. Imagine a road no one drove on. That's basically what we're talking about. The Chamber's report divides the state into regions. Northern Indiana's resources are strong, but face a growing need for irrigation. And southern Indiana's water sources are too spread out, leaving many parts of the region limited. Chamber of Commerce officials say the report is one step towards creating a plan that could help manage the water use in parts of the state that don't have as much access to it. For example, the entire route of I-69. It is cutting through arguably the most dry area of Indiana. There's not good water resources along there unless you get over near uh, the waterways themselves, but you can drill a long way through rock and not get much water at all. So it's going to be critical to figure out a way for that corridor to get water up and down the corridor to be economically developed. The chamber says cooperation and coordination between the counties and the local businesses, such as Fells Quarry, are key in establishing a water resource plan. This is very much a ground up suggestion. This is not a top down idea. This is really about providing the information about aquifers, rivers, etc., but then allowing the regions to provide their own perspective and priorities about how that water should be used. Without an established water supply plan, Griffin says businesses might not continue to be as eager to relocate or expand in Indiana. We like jobs, uh, we like business, we want to grow business, keep business here, and um, the, the fact is that Indiana has great water resources. Griffin says the chamber will look to legislation next year to keep looking into water management and how to fund it. There will probably have to be legislative uh, action to empower whatever that entity is to go to these people and say, we need to see this data and make that happen. Back at the quarry, Fell says it wouldn't do him any good to worry about water now. He has plenty. He tries to just put it in the back of his mind and remain hopeful that the state will come up with a plan before there is a problem. For us, until I'm sure we're pushed to the edge, we're not going to look at it um, any more seriously than we are now, but we have to have water.
The chamber suggests that if action isn't taken in the next 20 years, Indiana will face serious water challenges. Projected numbers the chamber put out to begin funding the next step in water data collection could start at $10 million a year.